We're gonna go ahead and get everything started here. Uh, if you haven't entered into the raffle, make sure you check in with Ramsey really quick. He will be able to get you signed up as a part of the raffle. We're gonna be giving away, again, a, a Dardashi gaming desk, Atlantic Spectrum gaming desk. There's some Immortals swag opportunities, as well as I understand Illinois College also gonna be doing some sort of giveaway. You wanna know about that one as we go. We're gonna introduce the panel to y'all. Uh, of course, we have our social media manager, Jay. And we'll, and we'll go down the line. You introduce. It, it, it's, it's on. Oh, so. Okay. Uh, I'm Jay. I'm the social media manager at Unified. Uh, I'm going to be hosting the panel today and just uh, asking the question to our panelists here. Thank you guys all for coming over and uh, yeah, looking forward to this. These guys have some really good insight on the industry, so looking forward to hearing from them. Yep. Hey everyone, I'm Tony. I'm the graphic designer and social media manager at Immortals, and I'm actually an alum of Illinois College where I double majored in uh, business management and fine arts. Hey everybody, I'm Anthony Barnes. I live here in Jackson. I spent about 10 years in video game development, esports. I've worked in the Overwatch League, Call of Duty League, shipped Pokemon, Call of Duty, all kinds of stuff. And I'm here to give some insight on the business side and just getting into and facilitating esports as an industry. No, it, it, it's automatically on. Like, it's hard on right now. <laughs> I'm Diddy. I'm the head of esports coach here at Illinois College, uh, League of Legends, mainly uh, as a coach. And I'm mostly excited to thank all the awesome people that helped make this event happen. No, huh. not that long. <laughs> all right. So, first up, always got to start off with the icebreaker question for you guys. What is your guys' favorite? video game to play and why? Ooh. <laughs> I would say my favorite video game to play is League of Legends, mainly because I did play Collegiate and uh, I'm kind of addicted to the game so I can't really get over it at this point and um, too much time sunk into it. Uh, favorite game to play is Overwatch, despite what Blizzard has been doing to it for a few years. But I absolutely love the ability to get in with a small, like, tight-knit group of people with different roles, and that the quick respawn allows me to mess up and try again. My favorite game, and the only game I play, is League of Legends, uh, because I know it's important as a coach to also put myself in the position of my players, uh, get that experience, stay up to date and I've been addicted and in love with this game for many years. All right, awesome. Uh, next question for you guys is, what did the journey look like you from your first moment in esports to where you are now? So I actually started esports when I was 12 years old playing Call of Duty. Um, I wanted to be a professional player for as long as I remember. Um, but when I came to college, I realized that I wanted to be more of the back end of esports. And I started professional esports with an amateur team called Team Fish Taco. Let's go! And that's when, <laughs> that's when I started my graphic design career. Um, I moved up the ladder when it comes to amateur, and I worked for like teams like Supernova, AOE, and then I got an internship at Immortals, where now I am their graphic designer and social media manager. So. Uh, it was a long ride from Call of Duty all the way up to Professional League of Legends. So I competed in card games like Magic and stuff when I was around 10 and I got into video game development because I wanted to help with the management and business side of things and as I progressed through that, esports has gotten big and you know way more organized like it is now. So eventually when I transitioned to the Overwatch League, I was able to help produce the events for like BlizzCon 2019 and whatnot and it has been that was this was like a dream you could hardly imagine it and now just coincidentally coming up at the same time now to contribute is just phenomenal stuff because it takes all kinds of people putting on the show and doing all this background work lifting all the heavy boxes just so we can have this it's important and helps build the foundation for esports as an industry I started uh, playing Call of Duty where my brother introduced me to his Call of Duty 3 clan. If any of you were alive or remember that game. <laughs> when Call of Duty 4 came out, my brother drove me to, from Ohio to Indiana to compete in a, my very first LAN tournament in 2008. And I won the whole thing with these uh, three other guys and won a $75 check. And I have a picture of me holding a $75 paper check 
and um, fell in love with competitive gaming, understood uh, it was real. And when I went to college, I kind of transitioned to League of Legends just by bringing a laptop with me and um, couldn't put the hours in the COD anymore. After graduating Cleveland State, I started their club, did some volunteer work, got those guys traveling and competing, and then um, just took the offer here at IC, moved out here alone, and have just been doing what I can to, to help over here. That's awesome to hear. Um, something that's really important at unified events uh, is the collegiate esports space and building up co uh, all collegiate esports. So for you guys, how does your education play a role in your esports journey? So for me, I played collegiate esports and I want to say that the education that I got at IC really helped me pursue my career. Um, I took a lot of classes that meant a lot to me in terms of uh, marketing, like integrated marketing here at IC was one of my favorite classes. And um, I also took fine arts, but I specialized in digital art and my teacher was a huge uh, foundation for me of learning how to be a graphic designer and how to be an artist. So that's how I really got my way there. Um, but now I am pursuing my master's at Maryville University, which is the best collegiate program in the country. And that has led me to a lot of connections in the esports industry that I would never have even thought about having. So I want to say that collegiate esports is the foundation of making your connections in the professional space. Big plus one on that one. Going through college is hard and you get to meet a ton of people. And if you take college seriously, what you need to do to get through college, you'll understand what it takes to be an esports player. It's not that you don't keep having fun with the game, but you, need to, you do need to take it seriously to another degree. And because gaming can be done by anyone, you can find partners and players in any class. It doesn't matter the subject. So if you learn those networking skills and then learn how to do social media and Discord, just all these online communities, then you can start finding people that think the same way as you, and then you start pushing each other. And that you have to then commit to, which I'm sure you know plenty about. I feel like we all know how important education is. I just want to touch again on um, the professionalism that you can learn uh, playing esports and just joining a culture, a program, and um, learning the importance of being on time, uh, respecting your not only your teammates, but uh, your competitors as well. And my education background was psychology, which uh, I have found has been very helpful in me um, helping others. And so uh, I used my education in my job, and we all know it's very important to, you know, learn how to just be a professional. Like I can't stress enough how if you go to college and you're not part of any group, um, any team, any culture, you might not be incentivized to show up on time or to get your stuff done but if your team is depending on you to be on time you'll be on time and and that'll translate into life skills also social skills all these things kind of it's like a simulation of the game of life right I love that you guys all kind of hit on this in this last question of networking as a social media manager I try to push to players how important being able to use social media and network yourself is very important. So for you guys, how do you guys see uh, social media playing a role in the esports industry? I think as a player, social media is one of the most important things that you can have. Um, Post-graduation or post-competing, uh, you want people to know who you are, and the only way you're going to do that is through social media and the connections that you make. Um, I think my biggest advice is don't be afraid to reach out to people. Um, at the end of the day, we're all people, we're all humans, and uh, don't be afraid to reach out to professionals. Um, they're, they're, just a, they're just a person. Don't be afraid. Um, if you ever reach out to me on Twitter or Discord, I'll never not respond to you. I'll always respond. Um, and you want to make those connections early and to foster those connections. Um, and for me, I would have never had the connection of Immortals if I didn't reach out to the people and cold DMing them or just wondering or asking, hey, do you guys have internships open? And luckily they did, and this is how I started where I am today. Um, so never be afraid to reach out to people. It's, it's the biggest thing that a lot of people are scared about. And that, you know, don't reach out to professionals because they'll ego you or they won't respond to you. Um, I promise you they'll always respond and they care about the future of their organization and the industry that they're in. And if they truly care, they'll respond to you, I promise.
I've got a bit more of a professorial side of things. Take LinkedIn seriously. It is a tool, and I assure you it's valuable. One of the best things you need to know, you are far more skilled and affable on Twitter than I am. But I, on LinkedIn, I've got this long list of companies that I follow. And if I go to these companies, I can look at the people that work there and see what their job titles are. It can be kind of hard sometimes on Twitter or other social medias to find what someone actually does. So if you think to yourself, I want to be a social media manager, I want to be a graphic artist, I want to work on team psychology and player support, which is a very real thing, find those people on LinkedIn who do that day in and day out and talk to them that way as well. Sometimes you can get a bit more of insight from these people who are also trying to build their social media presence on LinkedIn and see what they're posting about, see what they find valuable in their professional sense. These two already did a great job, especially Tony. How could anyone pass Tony on the social media subject? Um, I would just mention that in terms of job development and career skills in esports, uh, having a, a social media plan and, and then actually executing that, you'll need like 10 different job titles worth of work to do it right, right? So you can start just you with your club at, at your school or whatever, but if you really want to be consistent and uh, model after an organization like Maryville, for example, you'll soon find out uh, you need a team, you need to work with other people, you need to work together, you need to generate content, you need a good aesthetic, you need a good um, you know, narrative, you need to tell a story, you need to connect with people, and all these things, um, again, range in how many job titles that you know don't even just apply to esports, but apply to marketing in general uh, with the direction that uh, advertising and marketing is going. I appreciate that as someone in social media. I love hearing you guys tell, tell people to use social media. I, I try all the time. Um, okay, so pivoting a little bit here, uh, all, all of us on the stage here are people who are in esports now um, and maybe didn't have the same opportunities growing up. So, how do you guys feel about the esports landscape today? Um, in comparison to esports when I first started, I think that esports now is in a better place than it ever has been, and that you'll get as much support now than um, back when I was looking for colleges. The best deal that you could get is if you were a challenger player and you get a full ride at a random school, but now you can look at any school and any level and get the support that you deserve. Um, I truly believe that esports now is something that should be taken as equally as traditional sports and that if you're good at your craft then you should be compensated properly through scholarships and uh, grants and all those different types of things. Um, and so if you're a parent out there, I would like to say to you that esports is a real thing. Um, you can get your kids and their future secured through video games and that it's something that you know um, was never like this 10 15 years ago but now it's a it's a great avenue for your kids to have a successful future and for their future to be guaranteed through esports yeah I'm an old hat man it used to be pretty grody when I was a kid I mean you walk in there you might not even have rugs on the ground we didn't have anything other than somebody screaming from the other side of the room and as a parent you might go in and go this isn't organized at all where's the point what how is this going to work and now you have organizations like unified that put on this whole production that you can walk in with all of the parents that i'm seeing here with their young kids their older kids now the parents are getting in the games that mixing wasn't really a thing when i started and now it's accessible but taken seriously and still fun this it's just a whole lot more whole now and I really appreciate it. I'm going to take this question to the next step and share my honest thoughts. I think esports will pass traditional sports one day and I think it's starting right here and it has just begun and Unified is leading the pack and I see could be a mecca. We know St. Louis is right down the street there, a mecca right there. Uh, it trickles down, the young people are obviously engaged, it's just about spreading the word and putting the work in and um that's why i just want to thank you know unified i see other staff members you guys for you know coming out here and and giving the school that i work at uh, your time and attention all right 
So this this will be my last question, and then we will take audience questions after this. If you guys have any questions that you want to ask, uh, so for this one, for anyone who's out there in the audience today who's pursuing their esports passion, what's one thing that you would want to say to them? I think my one tip for anyone going into esports now is that esports isn't just about being a player, and that it's always about being someone else in marketing in partnerships or content, there's a lot of avenues outside of just being a player in esports. I think there's a big narrative that everyone thinks that esports is all about being a player and I promise you I kind of gave up my dreams of being a player uh, to be a social media manager and I am enjoying my career just as much as I think I would being a player and that there's a lot of avenues for you outside of just being a player in esports. I would say, think of yourself as part of a whole. A rising tide raises all ships. So if you represent esports in a respectful sportsmanship, clean manner, you champion its values, you'll help everyone around you. Don't think about clamoring over each other to be the best. Think about moving as a team to the top together. I would just say that one of the beautiful things about esports, one of my favorite things is that it is for everyone. There is no shape or size or any limits to who can participate in esports. So it is for you. Don't be shy. Uh, you belong. And um, that's not really advice. It's just more of like an observation. Um, I would take Tony's advice earlier of asking questions. If you really just bug people with emails and knock on their doors and uh, put a lot of hard work into something, Find some people who believe in you and uh, tell a convincing, give a convincing message. Uh, not only will that help you in life, but you'll find someone who, uh, who will listen and, and you can do it. Uh, you belong.